here we meet at the park we'll we'll shoot for the park and we'll go from there um Yeah, I was, I was thinking the same oh, thing. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. yeah, I think we've got several canopies here. That's, that's a great idea. That would be awesome. Okay, so we'll, we'll keep in touch. We'll watch the weather. Hopefully this is the last of the yucky stuff until October-ish. So is it going to be a 10-ish? 10-ish, okay. yes. Yes. All right, so more information on that to come. But that's all I have for now. Good. I'm out of here. Good. <coughs> Great works are performed not by strength but by perseverance. <coughs> by gnawing through a dike, even a rat may drown a nation. Hmm. Okay. The name of the and I, I knew this, but I always forget it, and it's always fun to bring it up. Uh, the name of the search engine Google is derived from the word Google, which is actually spelled G double O G O L, which refers to the number one followed by one hundred zeros. Oh, it's a Google. How many years have I been here? <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Uh, I noticed in a farmer's field, uh, the farmer allows walkers to cross the field for free, but the bull charges. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Message on a leaflet. If you cannot read, this leaflet will tell you how to get lessons. <laughs> okay. On a repair shop door. We can repair anything. Please knock hard on the door. The bell doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. Just silly. Silly, silly, silly. All right. Uh... Why don't I recognize any of this? <laughs> the name Wendy was made up for the book Peter Pan. There was never a recorded Wendy before. Uh, oh. oh, yeah, I don't know. Weird. It's, like that's it's on the internet, though. It must be real. <laughs> right. yeah, totally. There are no words in the dictionary that rhyme with orange, purple, and silver. Oh, and now everybody's trying to go, yeah. what? <laughs> and I'll lose them for at least five minutes here. There are no words in the dictionary that rhyme with orange, purple, or silver. Can I go on? <laughs> Leonardo da Vinci invented scissors. It also took him 10 years to paint the Mona, Li Mona Lisa's lips. A yeah, I see, I thought I did this one. A tiny amount of liquor on a scorpion will uh, make it instantly go mad and sting itself to death. Maybe I didn't because I see the horrified look. Oh my God. <laughs> A tiny amount of liquor on a scorpion will make it instantly go mad and sting itself to death. If we lived in Texas or something, we could try this, but, but no, no, no scorpions. Actually, we do have scorpions around here. I forgot, we do. Yeah. Somebody needs to try that. Get back to me. The mask used by Michael Myers in the original Halloween was a Captain Kirk's, ma Kirk's mask painted white. What it says. Look at the first movie and see what you think. So. Uh, the 40th anniversary for the very first Star Trek movie is come. Uh, they're going to replay it as a 40th anniversary big deal. Star Trek's birthday. Star Trek premiered today. The, the movie? No, the, the TV the series itself? Yeah. yeah. It's in 1969. <laughs> so 50 years ago. Oh, Lord. <sighs> <laughs> Just, I don't want to think about stuff like that. <sighs> An exasperated... Oh, uh, yeah, I'm going to get in trouble. An exasperated mother whose... Uh, no, I'm not. Whose son was always getting into mischief finally asked him, how do you expect to get into heaven? The boy thought it over and said, well, I'll run in and out, in and out, in and out, keep sliding in the door until St. Peter says, for heaven's sake, Dylan, come in or stay out. <laughs> That works. That works. All right. Let's sing a song. We're going to... Jan, have we sung this song before? Many, 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 many. Okay. So many years ago, we sang this song. Amy Grant. 
Hi. Thanks, honey. You saved me. Uh, we are so fortunate. We have so many people that are well known in the Tri Cities, and they get all kinds of press. You know, Fred. Uh, I mentioned something a week or two ago. Got in uh, a couple of newsletters, and here's the Cadillac newsletters front page. Got a nice article on him. Has walked eighteen thousand miles. Man, oh man, oh man. We have uh, Patrick, who's running for city council uh, in, in Pasco. Very cool. Thank you very much for doing that. And actually, has nothing to do with anything, but a, a good buddy of mine was just, he, he, he went back east, and he has just gotten um, the title of number, the best windshield installer in the world. I mean, he competed against all companies and around the world, and I mean, he came out number uno, which has never happened from somebody that first tried it. So it's a big deal, really. He works for Novus. He runs the Novus in uh, Clearwater, so I guess that was a plug for him. Um, and you have something to say, do you not? Allegedly so. All right, this is a prayer for deliverance. Loving spirit of light, save me. Save me from my mental musings. Save me from judging myself and my past. Save me from judging others as well. Save me deliberately. Lift me above the anguish I impose upon myself through old thought patterns. Life teaches me I am not good enough. I am undeserving of good things. I am not valued. I can and will fail. Reveal to me my successes and strengths, for my past binds my awareness. Open my heart and teach me the truth. Save me. Amen. The gratitude is, I am grateful for divine deliverance into the truth of who I really am. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. I almost relish when I fail, because I get to do it all over again. <laughs> I have fun trying sometimes. And I am going to be reading the words of the ancient ones. Bless and be blessed. When you seek harmony, it will be revealed to you. When you seek joy, it will be revealed to you. When you seek blessings, they will be revealed to you. When you seek worry, it will find you. When you seek distress, it will find you. When you seek annoyance, it will find you. Be careful what you look for. The fastest way to shift out of worry and distress or fear is to bless someone else. To bless is the simple act of specific intentional kindness in thought or deed. When one finds a specific intentional kindness, those other troublesome energies fade and dissipate from your consciousness and from your life experience. The amazing and beautiful thing about blessing someone else or blessing a situation with kind thoughts is that blessings return to you in an amplified manner. Not only does your personal energy change and feels better, but also the energies around you shift and become magnetized to positive life experiences. Bless and be blessed. That's nice. Thank you. Okay. I think we have one book left. Uh, Linnell's Neighbor makes these mandalas and they're little coloring books and she gave a bunch of them to church for us to use as a fundraiser and so they're gone but one. <laughs> I think this one and another one so there's a couple left if you are so inclined and would have an interest in that uh, a $10 donation and it's gonna just see Nancy in the back room uh, in the office after services, and she'll get you hooked up with that. So I want to chat with you today. Sorry. I'm a Virgo. It's my birthday. <laughs> Virgos don't do clutter really well, so I can't look over there. It fills stuff. <laughs> okay, now I'm better. <laughs> so there we go. Okay. 
Um, thank you for indulging my little self. <clears throat> I want to talk to us today a little bit about compassion. And it's not a hard subject, but it's a hard subject, I think. It's a challenging subject. Because true compassion is void of ego. And we've been talking about ego a little bit last Last Sunday we did just a bit. Um, and ego is that stuff that just gets in the way, you know, when we want to have our way, want to do it our way, uh, when it's all about us. So compassion, when we're trying to help someone just because we can't stand it, that's not compassion. If I want to help somebody because I just can't hear that stand them whining another minute. That's not compassion. If I try to help someone so that I look better now they owe me, that's not compassion. But what is compassion? I, I did a bunch of reading in the good book. I'm not going to read it all because there's a lot in here about compassion. But I want to read just a couple of verses that really kind of carry the information that is imperative for us. And then I'll tell you why. Wouldn't that be nice? Because in Matthew uh, chapter 9, verse 36, Jesus was going to different cities and villages and, and teaching them, doing healings of every kind for every disease and every kind of sickness. Verse 36, And seeing the multitudes, he felt compassion for them because they were distressed and get downcast like sheep without a shepherd. Matthew 14, 14. And when he came out, he saw a great multitude, and he felt compassion for them and healed their sick. And moved with compassion, Jesus touched their eyes, and immediately they received their sight and followed him. This is Matthew 20, 34. Uh, Mark 6, 34. And disembarking, obviously he was on a ship, he saw the great multitude, and he felt compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began teaching them many things. This compassion is this instantaneous call to action. It's movement. It's active. It's not just, oh, I feel sorry for them. No, it's, it's this motivation that gets us going. And we can do kindness and have a motivation not be compassion. But when you have compassion, when I have compassion as a motivation, we're unstoppable. Unstoppable. So this compassion isn't passive. It's active. And we've been talking about the five energies, the five waterfall energies, starting with peace. And peace is not just boom. But peace is this active awareness, this readiness. Being, being comfortable in this moment without having to do anything, without expected to be, be doing anything, but just to allow this moment to exist, to be there. And most of you are experiencing peace right now. You're just here. And you're allowing this moment to unfold, however it's going to unfold. Which leads to vitality, which leads to energy. We open and unlock storehouses of energy within ourselves. Because when we're efforting about stuff, anguishing about stuff, that locks us down and takes our energy. It's, it siphons energy off and, and removes energy from our accessible field. So in other words, there's a, talking to you a little bit about this last week, there's pools of energy within every cell that we cannot access if we're stressed. And yet if we can step out of that stress through peace, then all of a sudden we have this vitality, this, this uh, upsurge of energy that's usable. It's not like anger. Anger is a, is a burst of energy right now and maybe we feel like but it's de depleting. 
If you've ever been angry and had to storm through something and then when you're done, you're even more tired than when you started. Anger is non-sustainable energy. Um, I used to clean house that way. <laughs> oh, this is just a filthy mess. <laughs> Until I threw away the checkbook. Because when you get in that frenzy, what happens to the thinking mind? Yeah. <whistles> Out the window. It's not thinking anymore. But when you're in this state of vitality and not in that energy of frustration, anger, or whatever, um, then this beautiful wellspring of energy becomes available to us for us to do with whatever, whatever we would choose, which leads to courage. And the courage grants us that inner power of knowing our capabilities. It's not the stupid, oh, I could do anything, and then you know, hurt yourself or something, but it's that understanding what we're capable of. And knowing that we're capable of more than we've ever done before in a positive way. But also knowing what is ours to do. Just because something needs to be done doesn't mean it's ours to do. And if we apply ourselves to something that is not ours to do, what happens to our energy? Plummets. So pay attention. When we pay attention and notice that, then we become aware that we're aware, and we step into this higher level of awareness, this awakened awareness, this expansive awareness that allows ourselves to be guided, allows us to have the confidence in that we are being guided, confidence in who we are and where we're, what we're all about, so that that guidance can lead us to the next step. And when we are in that state of awareness, then we access compassion. And this compassion is this motivation that gets us off our backsides and out into life. You know, it's so hard. It's so much easier to sit and play a video game or read a book or watch a, something on TV. It's so much easier to do that or Facebook, whatever. But to be in the state of awareness where your motor's running and you're charged up and you're ready to go, that's when spirit can put it on your heart, what, what's right for you to do next. That's when spirit puts it on our hearts as to how we can be a blessing to ourselves and others. That's when spirit touches our awareness and grants us this powerful motivation to move forward and be a blessing to ourselves and others. It's powerful stuff. The key is that we forget. I don't think we want to forget, but you know, life happens. And when life is busy happening, it's really a, a, an easier pathway to slip into a place of, of just duty and obligation and responsibility. But when we're in that duty, obligation, responsibility, certainly there's responsibilities to do. I don't know about you, but there's laundry to be done. You're never done with laundry. As soon as you're done with laundry, somebody's gonna make a spill or have a shower. It's there's laundry is gonna, laundry happens. <laughs> so, so it's not, <laughs> those are responsibilities, but how do we, how do we approach them? Oh, I've got to do another load of clothes. You know, that, that depletes our energy. Been there, done that, it's not fun. But just going, oh, isn't this going to be wonderful to have clean clothes? Then throw them in the washer. And thank God for my washing machine that does that. I don't have to go to the stream. You know? You can be, gratitude goes a long way with laundry. I tell you that. Verse 12 of Colossians 3. And so... I want to read what the answer was there for, but I'm not going to go into that because I want to keep our stuff short. Those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved. Okay, there's a whole three or four messages I could say about that one. If you're chosen of God, it's because you're choosing in. You choose in. I have decided. Have you? If you've decided to live like a believer, 
whatever your belief system is, you're in. You've chosen in, and you be, you're a chosen one. Put on the heart of compassion. Oh, we, it's like putting on a new shirt. We have to know we need a new shirt, you know? But we get to. Just pull it out of the closet. You have one in your closet. And you can put it on. So put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another, forgiving each other. Blah, 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 blah. There's more on that. You might want to read that. That was uh, Colossians 3. Verse 12. That, whole, that whole page there, you can't see it from where you are, but there's coffee stains and food stains. I think I've spent a little time in that, <laughs> that particular chapter. There's just a ton of information in that one. So what am I telling you? What I'm telling you is that compassion is not a natural state of being for humanity, but it is the natural state of being for divine nature. And we can tap into that. We can emulate that. We can access that for ourselves and for others with this expanded awareness. You have a right to it. It's your right, it's your birthright to have this compassionate expression of divine nature within yourself. And we're gonna tap into that today. Uh, Beth has a guided meditation she's going to do for us that's going to help us access this compassionate energy on a whole new level. So Beth, if you would join us up front, please. I'll clear the path. <laughs> 